Okay, this is our second Minesweeper video. Now we're actually going to start doing something in the program. Um, this is from our notes, and it says this is the body of the main procedure from a console program that randomly distributes 10 true values throughout a 100 item array. I think what we can do is uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be in a console program. I think we could just as easily put this in a um, mono game program. So uh, let's uh, copy this code here. And we will find out if we can copy it into a mono game program and still have everything work the same way. So um, I'm going to, so here's initialize, and I'm going to just keep initialize from getting cluttered. I'm going to write a void uh, program called plant bombs. And I'm going to paste all that code in. Okay. Um, so it looks like yeah, I got extra curly brackets here. I mean, they don't hurt anything, but they don't really need to be there either. So I got to get rid of one from the top and one from the bottom and then do a control K and a control D. OK, something I goofed up something. OK, the reason my mouse cursor was messed up is because my screen recording program was intercepting my keystrokes for uh, reformatting everything. So my reformatting keystroke, uh, control K, control D is what I normally do to do, uh, get everything lined up, uh, is not going to work. So I'm just going to have to do a shift tab here. And there we go. So didn't change anything about the execution, but it just uh, made it look a little prettier. So if I call plant bombs here, uh, it should plant the bombs. So let's go and... Uh, plant bombs and we're not passing anything in and let's just go ahead and we need to stop and we'll restart the program and what we want to do is we want to look at our um, I still have breakpoint in there so let's stop that and let's continue and now I want to view my uh, output window and uh, you can see, uh, I'm guessing this is 10 rows by 10 columns. And the dots are empty spaces and the asterisks are places where bombs have been placed. And it looks pretty random to me. So that part appears to be working. Okay. Now, all we have to do is we have to adapt this to uh, our mono game program. So let's go back up here. And um, so let me see. I want to... Uh, initialize the board. I've already got a call to plant bombs in there with a capital P. So uh, I want to initialize my board. And uh, let's go down to uh, initialize board. And all I have to do is take that array and set uh, every element in it to a blank texture. And um, set the appropriate location and uh, set the appropriate Boolean values. So uh, let's go up to the top here and see what our array is named. Our array is named cell, and it's made up of cell structs. Okay, And uh, we've already allocated memory for it, so we don't have to worry about that. So we just have to have a loop uh, that goes from, uh, actually, if we're initializing it, uh, we need to initialize everything on the outside here to uh, make sure that it does not have a bomb. Uh, the rest of it I don't think really matters because uh, we're not going to be uh, displaying anything from those cells. So uh, let's initialize the board uh, for and I think it's board size board size which is 10. Now it'll take me across every row and then I want to go across every column Yeah, I forgot my opening parenthesis here. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, the name of the cell I'm on is cell, and the subscript for the R for the row is R, and the subscript for the column is C, and then dot. Okay, and initially we will set has bomb equal to false. And uh, we'll set has flag equal to false. Yeah, 
and we will set is uncovered equal to false. So initially they're all covered. Whoops, let's try that again. I need to figure its position. Okay, this part could be kind of interesting. Uh, and position is going to be a rectangle. And it's got an X and a Y and a width and a height. And uh, the position, let's do the easy one first, dot width uh, equals and I don't remember what I called my constant up here, maybe cell size, uh, cell width. Okay. And they're all squares, so position dot height is also going to be equal to cell width. And then the interesting part is I have to figure out uh, the X and the Y. Okay, um, so let's stop a minute here, and I'm going to do a little bit of calculations. I'll put some comments in here. Um, the completed board is going to be 480 by 480. Okay, that takes up every vertical pixel, but the width is 800. And you know what? Let's keep this easy. Let's just put everything in the upper left-hand corner. So we're starting at 0, 0. And um, then, let's see. Um, the x value is going to be a multiple of 48. And it's going to be the column number times uh, cell width. And since we're starting at 0, 0, and all of my elements are square, uh, the Y position is going to be the same, except it's going to be the row uh, times the cell width. Okay. I think that may be all other than uh, the texture. So we only need to look at the little blue bricks here. We've done has bomb, has flag, is uncovered. Um, neighboring bombs, we should set that to zero. Uh, and the texture is something that we'll have to get uh, in um, load content. So let's set the number of neighbors, neighboring bombs, equal to zero to begin with. Okay. So that should initialize our board. Um, then we want to plant the bombs, and that is basically going to be this code right here with some modifications. Let's do a control X. Uh, we don't need any of this anymore because we've got our own plant bombs function shell right here. And so let's go in there and do it. Uh, do we have a random number generator up here? Uh, we do not, so we'll keep the random number generator down here. Uh, we're going to create an array of 100 booleans. Uh, this will initialize 90 of them to false, 10 of them to true. And then we're going to um, scramble the data in there. So we're randomly mixing up um, all of the bombs. So it'll be in random locations. And then what I want to do is uh, I don't want to write it out anymore. Uh, I'll just leave this here just in case I want to go back and do it, though, for, like, for debugging purposes. So let's comment that out. Uh, what I do want to do is um, I want to take uh, a subscript I, which is going to be an index into my 100 element array. So I want to take a number from 0 to 100 and convert it into a corresponding row and column. Okay, so... Um, So here's what I want to do. Um, cell 0 out of 100 is going to go into row 0, column 0. Cell 1 is going to go into row 0, column 1. Cell 2 is going to go into row 0, column 2. And so, and if I take the number i 
and mod it by 10, that will give me my column number. So int c equals i mod 10. So c is 0, column 0. c is 1, column 1. c is 2, column 2, all the way up to 9. c is 9, column 9. Then I go to 10, and that's back to column 0. 11 is column 1. So um, I'll get the column number if I take i and divide by 10 and take the remainder. Um, likewise, uh, the row number is going to be i divided by 10. Uh, 0 through 9 divided by 10 will give me 0. 10 through 19 divided by 10 will give me 1. Uh, 20 through 29 divided by 10 will give me 2, and so on. So now I know uh, the row and the column in my cells array. So I want to go to cell r, comma c, and uh, dot has bomb equals uh, my Boolean array here, which is called uh, n. Uh, sub i. Okay. And that should randomly uh, distribute the bombs for me. And let's put a little bit of, no, we'll just put a, a breakpoint uh, right here at the end of that function. And when we get to that point, we will have randomly distributed uh, 10 bombs. And we can go in here and look at cell when we stop the program and see if we've got 10 bombs randomly distributed. Uh, it might be a little bit of effort, but uh, it's not going to be too hard. Let's go ahead and start that up. Uh, let's wait for it to get to the breakpoint. Well, let's not wait for it to get to the breakpoint. Uh, I left some semicolons out. So, um, uh, oh. I forgot the last part of my loop. Okay. And now we should be good. Let's go ahead and run it. It'll stop when it gets to the breakpoint. And so we've stopped right here. Now let's go take a look at cell and go to the little arrow here. And um, it is, can I, can I open this up? Uh, as bomb is false. Okay. Next one. Has bomb is false. The next one has bomb is false. Okay. Next one has bomb is false. Next one has bomb is false. Bomb is false. You know, theoretically we should go. There we go. So there's one in column six. And so if we if we bothered to take the time to go through all of these, I'm sure we would find ten bombs. So we have planted the bombs. Uh, what else do we have to do? Um, we so we've done initialized board, we've done plant bombs. Now we have to count. Uh, the number of neighbors. Uh, before we do that, though, um, let's talk about how you would draw uh, the board. So what I want to do uh, each pass through the loop is draw all 100 cells. So 4, R equals 0, R is less than uh, board size. And 4, And what I want to do is I want to draw uh, if the cell at this row and this column dot has bomb, uh, then I'm going to draw a bomb. So uh, sprite batch dot draw, and it needs a texture. And I want my bomb texture to be drawn. And I want uh, the rectangle for the current cell, which is cell sub r comma c dot rectangle. Oh, didn't call it rectangle. That's why I'm having the problem. Position, comma, and color dot white. Now, if it is does not have a bomb, then we're going to sprite batch dot draw blank texture, comma, using the same rectangle. So that looks like it'll work, except for, um, I think I'm good. Let's go ahead and uh, 
let's stop the program we'll run it uh, we'll remove the breakpoint and then we will start it from scratch okay so here we go and no oh, so what did I do wrong I left out a parenthesis uh, got my semicolon on the wrong side here and that's all now let's run it okay so uh, let's count them up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there are ten it looks to me like they're randomly distributed uh, before we had one in column six up here um, but they're going to be different every time so if we run it again I don't really remember where they were but there's kind of a cluster down in this area right here before uh, so it looks like we're getting random stuff every single time so that's good so we can we can draw it um, now all we have to do is um, figure out how to interpret the the mouse clicks from the user and this video is going to be pretty long already so we'll stop here and we'll continue on video number three